Hello Capricorn, welcome to Dove and Serpent Tarot. If Capricorn is your sun, moon, or rising sign, this is your reading. Please hit the like button, leave a comment, consider subscribing to the channel, especially if this reading resonates with you. And if there is anything you would like me to pray over or meditate upon or send positive energy toward, please let me know. Now, this is gonna be a general reading, so try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. I am merely the messenger, and I ask you to connect directly with each of these cards and use your own intuition to take you beyond the details that I might provide. And remember, Capricorn, that the most important part of any tarot reading is you. Look at that Nine of Cups, beautiful. That is amazing. That is a, uh, that's some r follow your bliss type energy. A real, real blessing right there. Uh, we're going to put that into some context. We're going to use our Dove and Serpent spread. Oh, this is interesting already. You know, the twos and the three. There's that Cancer energy that is pretty much always in your reads. Let's look at this. Uh, let's do our mystery card, bonus card, confirmation card. This is the card that we select randomly. We're using the Smith Weight Tarot today. And we're just going to set this aside. We're, we'll put the frog on top. We're not going to look at it until the very end. And hopefully that will, um, you know, tie everything together, give us the confirmation that we need at the end of the reading. So let's look around here and see. We've got, we've got the air. We've got some fire. We've got some water. We've got some air, we've got some earth, and we've got some water. Um, this is this is pretty interesting. There, the only major arcana card we have is this hanged man at the end. So the hanged man, I think, is going to have a very special role in your life right now. Um, this seems to me like what the goal is. This seems like what we're what we're trying to do, where we're trying to get. Okay. Let's look at the Nine of Cups. The Nine of Cups here is, this is the beauty. This is the pursuit of happiness. Now, it's a nine, so it's a function, right? This is something that is that you are doing, and you are following your bliss. You are pursuing your happiness. You are doing the things in your life. You are making the choices in your life that bring you the most satisfaction, the most... Um, you're like you're, you're maximizing your potential for um, for experience in this world. You know, you are um, making the most with yourself, with your life, with your resources. You're doing the absolute very best that you can think of. Um, you're trying to do those things that fulfill you. You're trying to have this improved relationship with the world. Yeah. Um, We've seen this this kind of this energy building up for Capricorn in the last few weeks, where it's kind of you're emerging into your own power, and it's been a kind of a slow, gradual uh, process. There's been some missteps maybe here and there, but I really feel like you're doing the absolute right things for yourself. You are taking advantage of your potential, right? You are. Um, you're doing those things with your life that bring you kind of closer to being happy, right? Closer to being fulfilled and satisfied. Closer to you feeling like um, you're living your best life, you know? So I feel like a Nine of Cups, very good energy to begin with. Now, I wonder if this is some energy that's coming in right now if or if we're doing some work to maintain it. Because I kind of feel, if we look at the path of the dove here, there's some stuff around us right now that's kind of, um, you know, not interfering, but there are some other things tugging at us a little bit. Um, we've got these two water energies. We've got a Prince of Cups and the Knight of Cups on either side of us. So I wonder if you're being maybe pulled in two kind of emotional directions. You know, it could be that the one direction here, uh, not the band, uh, but the, the Prince of Cups over here. This could be one way that you're being pulled. 
And this is kind of the way of, of mystery. This is something that's a little unknown, right? The, the Prince of Cups is uh, a person or just an energy that has this allure because it's mysterious, right? It's that, um, it's the, the energy or the person that we're drawn to because we don't fully know what's going on, right? There's that, there's the attraction of that, of the mysterious, of the unknown. Uh, so I think this is kind of one way that your, your heart or your soul or your, um, your attention is being drawn. Now, it might not be a person. It could be a certain um, career path. It could be a creative uh, expression. It's something or someone that you're being drawn to precisely because it's mysterious and you don't fully know like everything about it, you know. This is um, this is a little bit of darkness there, and I think in some ways we're all kind of attracted to what is kind of mysterious and dark and unknown. Yeah. Um, it could be manifesting as a person, sure, and if it is, it's one of those uh, one of those people that not necessarily plays hard to get, but just doesn't really reveal everything right away. You know, there's always that kind of air of mystery uh, about them. And again, this could be just a career path or some kind of a creative uh, change that you're, you're considering, something else in your life that's pulling at you. And you're kind of attracted to that, but we're also kind of attracted to this Knight of Cups. Now, the Knight of Cups energy is some energy that's almost always in your readings, almost every every time I read for Capricorn. This is some cancer type energy. This is this is attractive because it's the tried and true. This is attractive because it's loyal. Because well, for the exact opposite reasons of the Prince of Cups. Prince of Cups is kind of dangerous, kind of unknown, a little mysterious, right? But the Knight of Cups, this other energy, what's, what's attracting you here is the exact opposite. This is fully known, fully understood. This is someone who is, or something, it could be just a path that you're considering going down. It's very loyal, it's very predictable, right? You know this one. It's comfortable and familiar. It's devoted. It's not going to let you down. It's lacking that mystery. It's lacking that excitement, that kind of, you know, uh, the darkness. But it is something that is consistent. It's, uh, you know, something that's very loyal, that you know will be there for you. So we're kind of being split in these, these two directions, I think, with our, with our emotional energy or with our pursuit of our happiness, right? You're following your bliss. You're doing the things you're choosing for yourself the, um, the, the path that is most fulfilling, that's leading you most quickly to this nine of cups. You're pursuing your happiness. You're following your bliss. Well, we've got these other energies to think about too. How are you, how are you deciding? Now, I don't know if this is a situation where you have to make a choice. It feels to me like it is one of those times. Okay. Now I know probably a lot of people are saying, well, why can't I have both? Well, you probably could, um, but I think that there is a, um, there's still this dilemma, right, on maybe which path to go down first. Or if this is a romantic thing, maybe this is, you know, maybe this is the romantic reading that we've all been waiting for. Um, I, I've never quite seen something that's this blatant, this obvious. There are two choices in love. And you have to kind of, you know, you're being, um, there's one path that seems more logical, more reasonable. It maybe is, when you do the math, it's the right path. But then there's the choice that's based on your passion. What do you feel? What does your soul tell you? What is that burning fire within you kind of telling you uh, is the right path, right? So there is this, there is this kind of dilemma. There is this um, choice that needs to be made. Okay. 
And the two of wands is here underneath everything. It's beneath the surface. And it's the energy that's saying you choose based on your heart, based on that burning desire that you feel, right? Not on logic, not on, um, well, you know, what's going to kind of give me the most return on my investment. Oh, let me make a pros and cons list. Let me write everything down. Let me ask. Let me talk it out. Um, no, this is just uh, what do you feel? What is burning within you? Okay. Because the two of swords up here, this is the math. This is working out the equations, right? But maybe this is the way you're going to go. Maybe you're listening to both. Maybe both of these methods um, are conflicted you know we don't see we don't see an ace anywhere here we see two three four and fives we don't see um, the conclusion yet maybe the mystery card maybe the mystery card over here maybe that'll be the conclusion uh, I think frog is trying to tell me but I don't speak frog so I don't know what the answer is we'll find out together okay because I feel like when we do the math we could make a case for either of these you know we could make a case for either of these when we follow our passion our fire I think we could maybe make a case for either of these so that's not really helping us right that's not really helping us out now, right in the middle of everything, uh, along with this Nine of Cups, we have a Three of Wands. And this is a, um, a function card. This is an expression. This is a tool. This is an outward flowing energy. And this one is our willpower. This is our creative direction. This is our asserting ourselves establishing and defending our boundaries and borders, right? This is us having integrity and making decisions based on that. So this card really, since we're, it's kind of crossed over this, um, and it's kind of interesting to me too, that we have such a juxtaposition of fire and water here, which again reinforces this idea of there being kind of two uh, choices, this kind of split. Because we have, here we have water, water, water. We have fire and fire. But then we also kind of have a balance with this one. This one's kind of the, the knight of cups is fire and water because it's a knight of cups. And that's the fiery aspect of the element of water. So we kind of have, we have two water, we have two fire, and then we've got one that's kind of um, just riding the line in between. So I think that's interesting just for the simple fact of having um, having the kind of split choice, right? Having the kind of two options. It kind of it kind of is black and white, you know, kind of is this dichotomy that we have. And these could be two different uh, different paths, two different companies, right? Two different um, majors at university, two different people that you're thinking of having a relationship with. Um, so it doesn't, you know, it, it can be resonating in, in any, any way, really, for you. But the important thing is that our integrity has to come into play. Our moral compass, we have to do the right thing for ourselves. We have to do what is going to maintain this Nine of Cups. It, the Nine of Cups is what we are, what we're doing. It's our life work. It's, our, it's us finding meaning and purpose and satisfaction in our lives. We have to kind of surround that with this three of wands. We have to still do the right thing. We have to be, we have to have integrity. We have to have character. And maybe this is why you're feeling like you have to make a choice, why you can't, you can't work both of these jobs. You can't do both of these majors. You can't date both of these people at the same time. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but I think your three of wands is telling you that for your own sake, for your own character and integrity, you've got to make a choice, okay? Now, I know what some of you are thinking, and we'll just go ahead and say it now. What if the hanged man means we're choosing neither? What if the hanged man says, I'm just, I'm not going to choose anything. I'm going to refuse to choose. 
Well, that's, that's an option. It's still a choice, but it certainly is an option, right? We've got to listen to what our soul tells us. What does your higher self, God, goddess, deity inform you? What does your conscience tell you? What does your intuition tell you? Right? Not listening to what is here um, burning within us, our, our burning desire, not listening to really what our logic is telling us here. But what does our, our higher mind, our higher senses kind of tell us? And yeah, I know I screwed up on the camera switching, but um, I'm still getting used to the, the new equipment that I have here. Um, anyway, let's go to the path of the serpent now. The first thing we see are these fives. Right? And the fives are... Well, let's just say they're difficult. Okay. First one, five of swords. This, I think, is the this, is this stress, plain old stress. I think the idea of having this kind of choice in front of you, maybe when you do the math, maybe when you listen to your kind of burning gut, it doesn't help. You're still, it's still confusing. You still want both, both uh, paths, both options still feel like the best choice. So how do we decide? How do we decide? Uh, and I think this issue is causing some mental stress. I think you're, you're feeling a little bit worn out. Um, and I'm getting this feeling like it's, it's starting to take its toll on you. It's kind of like, it's kind of ruining all the fun, you know. It's taking away from this confidence that you've had. Right? And that seems kind of counterintuitive, right? If we have all of this, if we have these two wonderful things that we have before us and we can choose either one, doesn't that make us feel good? Like, wow, this is special. I have not just one thing that I could do, but now I've got these two things that are just so wonderful, right? It seems like it's having the opposite effect on you. It's wearing you down. It is, um, <clears throat> it's exhausting you. It's stressing you out. It's making you lose a little bit of this, this confidence that I think we've been building for, for a long time. So, the next card, let's, let's look at this. This is the Five of Pentacles. And to me, sometimes the Five of Pentacles looks like the flipping of a coin, honestly. Because it is, um, it's the uncertainty, it's the randomness of the material world. This is saying nothing is certain. Everything is shifting, right? Nothing is ever static. There is no uh, definite anything. Nothing is defined, except in the air, except in our own calculations, except in our own air energy, our own kind of mental space. Nothing is defined. Everything is a process. Everything is becoming. Everything is 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 dying and growing everything is regenerating constantly it's a it's a process we live in a process yeah we don't live in a in a final state of things so maybe flipping a coin maybe just letting random chance so to speak happen maybe just don't decide maybe this is saying just go where the wind blows you just you know Whatever happens to, to, to happen. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. That feels like it could be stressful too. But maybe not. Maybe this idea of giving up some of this, this decision, this control, right? Especially when we look at the two, the two twos. You know, two of wands, two of swords. It's like, you know, you have to choose. It's like this pressure on you almost to make a choice, to decide. It's, it maybe feels like a lot of pressure. Maybe this five of discs is, is the answer. This kind of letting random chance, just kind of um, closing your eyes and, and letting the wind take you. You know, well, what we see next is interesting with this four of swords. And this, this is in the position of what we don't want. Okay. That's what we need. 
this maybe is making a decision. Maybe this card is saying we don't want to decide and settle it, but we know we need to. Because we, if really, if for the only reason, just so we can stop stressing out over it. Just so we can be at peace, just so we can get some rest and sleep at night. We need to figure this out. However you want to figure it out, throw a dart at a dartboard, flip a coin, you know. Um, randomness is not our enemy. A lot of people have this anxiety or this trepidation over uncertainty, over randomness. Well, you could believe in randomness or not. You can think there's chance and luck and coincidence or some kind of divine order. It doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't matter what you believe. The, the relief of pressure that the surrendering to chance gives us is undeniable. Right? When you remove yourself from the equation and just say, whatever happens, I'm going to be okay with it. Of course, there are some ethical and more moral problems with this. What if you're in the middle of a street and there's a bus headed your way? Are you still going to give it just up to random, random chance that maybe the bus will swerve in time? No, I don't think so. But that's where this Three of Wands really is important because this is our integrity. This is our character. This is us doing the right thing um, to preserve our integrity, right? This is, the, this is us being part of the process, okay? So this isn't some philosophical license to just um, avoid any kind of responsibility. This is... In a situation like this, like what we see going on with you right now, this may be one of those situations that you've done the math, you know, you've listened to your gut, you've, you've tried to work it out. It's not getting any easier. So maybe the hanged man doesn't really mean like, I'm going to choose neither of these. Maybe it just means I'm surrendering to however this plays out. Right? There's a lot of... There's a lot wrong, right? There's a lot you can argue here with me if you wanted to. So I can I can see the comments coming already. Uh, that you know your your application to college is not going to fill itself out. You're going to have to mail one of them. Well, maybe you mail both, and you just see which one gets back to you faster or has the better option or just, you know um, being open to either one. Whichever one it feels like maybe the universe is putting in your way. Whichever one you kind of naturally gravitate toward. When you, when you close your eyes and just kind of relax your body, which way do you lean? Which way do you start to fall? What do you gravitate toward? Right? kind of a, a, a pendulum divination almost. Maybe that's, maybe that's how you do it, right? But I think we're the pendulum. And we're this, we're the hanged man. So the hanged man could be a really detrimental card. This could be that you are never getting out of this situation. And even when this current dilemma has been solved, you're going to be, you're still going to be suspended in between choices and it's going to be miserable. But this card's also saying, look, maybe we don't have to. Maybe this is us free-falling, right? Maybe this is us um, accepting, trusting, yeah? Taking this kind of deep dive into the process, into the flow, into, that, into the water energy. Trusting that whatever happens, whatever we gravitate toward naturally, right, without wrestling with it, Again, if you kind of close your eyes and let let yourself sway, where where do you where do you go? Make yourself the pendulum, you know. If you're not familiar with pendulum divination, I'm sure there's some YouTube videos. Um, so this is to me this is quite quite interesting position that you're in. I mean, figuratively and literally. Um, I'm curious what these different options are for you. 
you know. And I'm curious if they are kind of equal in terms of your your math, your logic, and the way that you're kind of thinking about them. I wonder if they are indeed kind of equal when you are considering the the passion that you feel toward each one, right? Maybe it's it's two different majors at university, and you just have this intense burning desire for both. They're both going to be the same difficulty, really. Both going to be, you know, the same kind of money at the end. They both cost the same. Um, so, you know, for all intents and purposes, they're equal. So how do you choose? You know, I think we're stuck in the middle of that right now. Let's look at the mystery card. I don't want to think, I don't want you to think I forgot about the frog. I wouldn't do that to you. I wouldn't do that to the frog. Uh, this is it possible that this is going to um, show us leaning in a particular direction, All right? So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna speculate. I don't want to influence this in any way. Three, of course, it's gonna be the three of swords. <clears throat> um, the the three of swords is, um, I guess, in some ways, giving the advice like you're going to. Um, perhaps overcome the your the passion the kind of feeling portion of it and go with what makes the most logical sense but that doesn't really help us if our equations come out to zero if both sides of the equation match right both choices are equal well this doesn't really help us this card could also be saying remember a time in the past when you had a similar dilemma how did you choose then this isn't the first time that you had to choose between two equally, uh, you know, intense, passionate options. So what did you do in the past? Um, this might be a, a card that really says we have to kind of, um, I'm looking for the right word, just suspend, I guess. Might as well. Suspend our logic and our heart. Right? The, the swords pierce the heart, but the heart then can dissolve the steel. So we're canceling it out. Right? It's almost like the two of swords and the two of wands. These two just kind of dissolve each other. And it's all, it's all getting dissolved in this furnace that is our following our bliss and our our intent to pursue our happiness in a responsible way of course so we're removing we're removing the choice and we're doing it by um, blending together the fire blending together that air the swords are being dissolved by the heart and the heart is being pierced by the sword so it's kind of like kind of null and void over here yeah so really what we're left with, with is the, the decision, the actions, the, the way forward for you that's going to just be the easiest and the least stressful. Throw a dart at the dartboard, you know, because if we, there's no way to really reconcile. We've kind of cleared up all the energy over here. The only thing left is the stress, the anxiety, the worry, and getting us out of this suspended position in between the two decisions. So you just got to do what's going to be easiest for you mentally, honestly, right? And in your soul, in your being, what's going to be the least stressful way to choose between this, these options here. They must be, these two must be pretty intense if it's causing you this much stress. Uh, feel free to leave some comments if you would like to share some aspect of this uh, or just share how this is resonating with you. Uh, we're going to do an extended, too. If you would like to stick around, just click on the link that is up there. That will give you access to all of the extended readings, not just for Capricorn, for every sign. So you can cross-watch. You can check your other placements. Definitely hit the like button, leave me a comment, and subscribe to the channel if you have not done so. Thank you for taking this journey with me. And thank you for being the most important part of Dove and Serpent Tarot.